Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. Today I have Sharon Carnes on, a dear friend from Marshall County. Uh, Sharon does several different crafts and she is going to share with us right now about her crocheted rag rugs. Thanks for coming, Sharon. Thank you. Glad to be here. So tell me, when did you first start? Is this even your first craft that you've done or have you just been crafty all your life? Crafty all my life. Okay. What do you remember so, doing when you were younger? My mom first taught me to crochet okay. when I was real young. I used to even roll the balls for her a lot and stuff. So yes, I, I've always crocheted. And did she make afghans or did she make things for the house or wearable items? Um, all of the above. My mom made a lot of our clothes. She made her own patterns. Uh huh. And um, she would sew clothes, she would crochet, knit, and she made everything. Well, that explains a lot for you. So. And when did you first make a rug, a crocheted rug? February of this year. Oh my goodness, really? Yes, just this year. Did you, did your mom make them or your sister? No, you talked about nobody. your sister being crafty. No. no. So what's mm. caused you to s look at a crochet <coughs> hook and say, I'm going to make a rug today? Um, South Bend Paper had an article in there, showed a lady, and it had a picture of a couple rugs in the background, and that's what she was doing. And I thought, oh, that's cool, I can do that. Well, this is exactly why I so, ask people to come on here, because people around the community, our community, or around our surrounding communities do fun crafts like this, and you never know about it until you turn on the TV or pick up the paper or go to the library. We've got an excellent craft section, both in... Um, Rochester, in Akron, and down in Fulton, and other surrounding communities. So did you actually get um, a pattern to tell you what to do, how to turn the corners, or did you just, no. you just grabbed I, Jim's shirt and ripped <laughs> it into pieces? Actually, this was all material that I already had from past years. Which is so, part of the fun um, about doing yes. a craft like this. It's, I think of it, it like a pioneer craft because you're making do with what you have. Exactly. You're making something beautiful out of scraps. So <coughs> what were these two pieces? Do you just even material. Know? It was just, just material. Just material. And Flats of material. How um, Did you cut it? Did you rip it? Um, well, this is the second rug I did. Okay. So my very first one I started, I ripped. But I really didn't like that. Because I, of the frayed ends? It frayed a lot. I, I just felt it was not as good. Okay. So um, I started cutting with this one. And did you do a rotary cutter? I do a rotary cutter with my mat. And, okay. And, so um, this is a, a regular, um, like a 100% cotton, sort of like a quilting right. material. Did mm -hmm. you do a one inch <coughs> strip? This is actually like a 7 8 It's not quite an okay. inch. Almost um, an inch. And. Um, how did you connect your fabric pieces together? I've done it a variety of ways. Okay. I looked it up on the internet trying to find out how to do that. And, uh, you know, there's several different ways. You can tie them. Mm -hmm. You can cut the slits in the end and put them together. And I did all those and didn't like any of them. Mm -hmm. I because, now... Because, I'm assuming, because it was knobby. It was knobby. And, and when you do the slits with the two... Mm -hmm. the, Depending on how you crochet it and where that comes at, it doesn't mm -hmm. look very good and it doesn't lay very flat. Okay, so you wanted uniformity. <clears throat> so I now do it just um, like I do with yarn, where I, I just take a new, let's see, let's look it over here, um, an end, can't see, where, right there's an end. Okay. And, and I just leave the end take a look hanging. At okay. And then my next row, I crochet right over it. Okay. And I crochet over it for two rows, sometimes three rows, and then cut the tab off. That's, okay. That's the end, so that's, that's where I finished. But up through here, that's what I've done. Right. So and the tabs are all crocheted in, so there's no knots, there's no... So for those who are watching at home, <clears throat> crochet is nice because um, what she's talking about is she'll have the end sticking out, and then when she comes on the next loop around, she takes it and she, you crochet over it, crochet so it's right completely over. hidden. And mm -hmm. um, I do that with my ends when I'm crocheting a garment. <coughs> so I can understand what you're saying. If you don't crochet, it sounds a bit confusing, yeah. but just start, you can connect your ends another way and, and work your way to that point. So <coughs> where did you start this rug? In the center? In the middle, one strip. Okay, one strip. One strip. Probably here, because you've got a little bit of a 
might not be. Yeah. So you um, chain. Chain. And then you turn and you chain on the other side. Now tell me what you do on these turns in order to make your rug lie flat. <laughs> because if you don't do anything, if you don't increase around the corners, yes. if you just crochet into each piece, you're going to end up with a, a bowl. And you do have to in, you have to increase each each end each corner each corner well the end somewhere mm -hmm. and there again I looked on the internet okay um, because you I I was not able to find any books like at Joanne Fabrics okay I didn't find any books on doing this so I looked it up on the internet uh -huh. and um, there there are many sites and okay. I just picked out pieces from each one but. One of them said that you should not increase the same spot uh, because it begins to look like a pointed peak or something. Okay. So you have to vary where you're increasing. That's good to know. And they said two on each round. So that's four total. So one, two somewhere varied. Yes. And two on the other end. But, but as I did it and it got bigger, that doesn't really work. Okay. Um, I found that I did have to increase more than that. So there, there are a lot of uh, trial and error. Okay. Um, improvising as you go. Um, well, the nice thing about a crocheted rug is that you can check at any point, lay it flat, and if it's not working, do an increase or a decrease. And, and even if it was a little, they get a bowl like this if you don't uh -huh. increase. But most of them, if you lay it flat for a little while, um, they mm. will flatten out. From its own weight. Yes. Um, the other thing I found was when it, uh, I was crocheting a little tighter. Mm -hmm. So I made uh -huh. sure I loosened up. Heavier material, it's harder to do. And you really have to crochet looser. I also found on the heavier ones when they were doing that, I went like this and pulled them all the way around. It just stretches that a little bit okay, and helps it then to lay a lot flatter. And when you finished, did you just finish with a single crochet all around and then tuck yes. in your end? Well, my I didn't tuck it in yet. <laughs> I don't think I, the fish mind. No. This is her fish rug in front of her fish tank. And actually I made this for my granddaughter. This oh. is what she wanted and these are the colors she picked out of my material. And so I made it and then I had blue and white in a double knit. So I made my next one blue and white with this double knit. Uh -huh. She liked it a lot better because it's a lot thicker. Uh -huh. It's That's heavier. A feel. It's, it's a softer. Uh -huh. And she said, Underfoot. oh, can I have that one instead? I said, yeah, you got to give me this one back. So she gave <laughs> me this one back. And so I put it in front of my fish tank. I have a big aquarium. Oh, that's really sweet. I mean, yes. this, um, how do you care for it? Throw it in the washer and wash it. That's one of the nice things about it, because the fabric itself is machine washable. Yes. If you were to start with a fabric that's not machine washable, then um, you might alter something. But it's very hard wearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, washable, but it's also beautiful. The thing you made out of scraps is wonderful. So let's pull up the one that you have in process now. This is for her other granddaughter, or a other granddaughter. And and I had a little trouble here. Didn't in, It's the first I made a round one. She wanted a round one. Uh -huh. She wanted the colors of the rainbow. She picked the colors, and she picked the order that they would go in. And I had this laying on the floor last night underneath a uh, clothes basket. Okay. And it laid flat, oh. totally flat, okay. after, it, after it laid out. But... Th this is all cotton too, but it's a heavier cotton. Yes. So you can feel that it's thicker. It, it has a different feel and it's, it's it heavier. holds its shape more. It's um, a little harder to crochet because, okay. and, and when you're pulling it up, if you don't make a good loop here, mm. this really gets tight. Mm -hmm. And this is one that I've done a lot of this on because mm -hmm. you can see it's even though it's cotton, it stretches. I can see you making a change just doing that right now. And there again, improvising a lot because as it started going up, I thought, wow, you know, I'm already doing, I was doing eight increases in a circle. And I marked, 
yep. marked them so that I knew where my halfway was, That's so that I made she has sure a bobby pin bobby here. pin here and a paper clip on this side. Uh huh. So that um, this is where I started. So from here to here, I had to get at least three increases in. Uh huh. But I've just now started with four because three three was not enough. That's twelve. No, it's not point. enough. Mm -mm. Can so what size hook do you have, and can you um, do a few stitches, or is that Okay, we ha I'm left-handed, so All right. I have to turn it around. Well, it's way. easier for me. <laughs> so it it crocheting the rugs is just like crocheting with uh, yarn and a napkin because it's just simple crochet. You, okay, and you come through your loop, you yarn over, and I try to make sure I pull a good one here because if if you're tight like mm -hmm. this, you you have trouble getting this because this is really it's very thick. thick. So I, and I, I tend to be a little tighter crocheter, so I have to really work at making a little bigger loop there. And then you just loop it over again and pull it through, and pull it through both of them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not easy. A little bit of wiggling. Um, wh whatever this, this and the yellow were really hard mm. to do. Not as they, smooth. They, they feel more like a, a linen cotton. Uh-huh. This felt almost like a sailcloth cotton, and um, it just takes a little harder. Um, I don't do this as long. Mm -hmm. I can't do this for three hours at a time because mm -hmm. your fingers really get tired of pulling, mm -hmm. pulling this through right? because it's just so you're, heavy. You're wrestling a little bit. D trying to get it through this loop because It just doesn't go as smooth sometimes. That one went really smooth. Mm -hmm. And that one just that one wiggle it not through. as much because they're just uh, it's yep. just tighter. It doesn't slide as good. Well, it's a but nice. But when they're done, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very vivid. It's nice uh, project to have just by a chair and maybe do a row a day or something like that, and it gets done eventually. Yes, I don't carry this with me places because it's so big and heavy and mm -hmm. bulky. Unless I was going away for a weekend or something, but it it gets. I did in the very beginning when I first started right. it, but after that, it's just too heavy to um, carry with. Well, as well as crocheting rugs, you could do chair pads. Um, you could do placemats. I mean, these are quite thick, and they are going to <coughs> provide a little bit of um, space between something hot and your table. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of applications, but it's just something fun you can do with your scraps, something you can walk on and think, oh, I remember what that piece of fabric used to be. Or I just uh, cut up a sheet, uh -huh. a sheet that had holes right in the middle. Uh -huh. and normally we would just throw them away or use them for rags. Um, I just cut around the holes and cut them in strips and used that in some of the projects I've been doing. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate you coming in and sharing your interest and enthusiasm with us, and I hope that some people out there can pick up their crochet hook and make something new. Thanks for coming in, Sharon. Thank you. My life began. God, he had a plan. I was knitting together like a cable and sweater. Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. I've got Sharon Carnes on today, and she has brought a second craft that she has learned how to do. It is called locker rug hooking. This is something that I was introduced to in North Manchester at the quilt store. I bought um, a little kit and did something and when Sharon said that this is something she does for fun, I said, Sharon, come on and share it with us. So what is locker rug hooking? Um, I'm making hot pads. That's what all of these are, are hot pads. Okay. Uh, different sizes. Um, just use them to grab and pull things out and free. A actually, I don't use them to grab and pull. I use them strictly on the table. Okay. Um, well, they they would be excellent for that. It's very thick, and the and the bigger ones are nice for pizza pans or the big nine by twelves. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's thick and um, it is strips of cloth, usually cotton. Not doesn't have to be, but um, that's what I'm used to it with. That is. Mm woven in a special way around a mesh. So here, take my needle out. 
you know, I've got my right. big piece here too as well. Whee! Um, a big piece of mesh that you can buy at Joann's, correct? Correct. And it has um, a mesh. It's, is, this is probably the same background people use for a latch hook. It's, it's very similar. And it has um, a blue that denotes 10 by 10, I think. Um, and there's different sizes of mesh that you can get. But you buy the mesh. Two, two sizes. Two sizes. And the other one is much smaller holes. Mm -hmm. Really hard to work with for stuff like this. You would use a different hook and you would cut your fabrics to a different width were you to do the smaller one. So this right. is the larger of the two that are available. And so when you begin it, um, you cut the fabric to just slightly larger than what you want, like one square beyond what you desire, or how, I, it's well, been so long since I've started a project. Well, you have to take the canvas mm -hmm. and turn it under. Okay. A couple rows under, and then you have to bind the outer edge. Okay. Which is not the same as doing this. Not the you, same as no, you're, you're, you're No, you're just, you're just pulling the uh, material through the loops. And, and just binding it off for that, for that you first could take row. a tapestry or a yarn needle. You could you could do that, and that's how I was first taught. But I found it's just as easy to use a crochet hook. Okay, um, and to pull for it me, through and pull it through. Just pull it through. Just and pull you it through. Whip stitch it all the way around. Whip stitch it all the way around. Mm -hmm. So then you have your perimeter done, and then you are starting to locker rug hook. How do you go about doing that? How is it different from? latch hooks? How is it different from the crocheted rugs? Um, or from... Um, well, you have a different needle. Okay. And the needle has a hole in the end. Okay. Put that here. It, it's the equivalent size of a crochet hook. Exactly. It's an F. Okay. And it's about the only size that comes in. Okay. I didn't realize that. Um, it has one hook on the end, but this is where it's different. It has um, a very large open eye. That is, you know, none of it's sharp, um, easy to transport around. And it, it can be more difficult to find these. Where did you get yours? Off of the internet was the only place I could find them. Okay. Uh, we had been to all the Joann Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, every place, and nobody had them. Okay. Joann Fabrics in Plymouth now carries these. Oh, interesting. Um, I, I purchased mine at Creative Stitches in North Manchester, but that's when they oh, had a okay. class, and I would imagine since they're just doing machine quilting <coughs> now that they wouldn't carry it anymore. And I, I haven't been there to see them, but somebody told me they now carry these. I don't know whether enough of us had asked for them mm. or what, but oh, they now the, have some. But I Plymouth? ordered mine off of the Internet. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure if you have one, you don't, I mean, like crochet hooks, they can slip and fall between couch cushions. <laughs> Make sure, make sure it's secure because it can be hard to find another. Yeah. So this end is used for? Uh, your twine, okay. yarn, ribbon, wh whatever you choose to go through here. This one's a little harder because it's getting frayed on the ends. Mm -hmm. So you have one, p two different textiles working at once. One is this uh, anchoring yarn or um, nylon. Sharon brought these in. She said her husband had this in the garage, so she grabbed it. <laughs> it's like a nylon. It's very hard working, and it's not going to stretch. It's important that whatever you choose as your locking mechanism doesn't stretch. She also had some extra ribbon. You could use ribbon as an accent in the actual fabric that's showing, or you can use it as your tethering anchor yarn. I use cotton twine when I've done it. Um, and you have to have it cut <coughs> into a, I don't know, a couple feet. What have you found to be comfortable? Um, yeah, probably that? a couple feet. I, I just did one here where I had an exceptionally long one. Uh huh. I like doing that because you don't have to stop and do so many knots. Right. But when you first started, it's it's pretty long, and you're pulling two you're of pulling, these. Pulling, pulling, pulling. So you're clear back here, pulling it through. So it's just what you prefer, but but I liked not to having to do so many knots. So this is used to anchor, and it goes through the center of all of these loops. So it will become almost invisible if you, depending on what fabric you use here, you could, you know, get a little sneak peek. So if yes. you're doing a dark fabric, you might prefer a dark anchoring thread. 
That, and that's why I like the blue on this okay. because mm -hmm. if if you did see, because occasionally you do. Yeah, especially if it if it bends like. It. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it blends right in when you're using the same color mm -hmm. as, as what your material is. So the method that we use here is that on top we have the anchoring thread and then pulled through the bottom is going to be um, some other kind of material and it's going to be cut to an even width. So what is some of the material you've used before to pull through? This one is a double knit. And, and actually this is the second one I've done in double knit because the first one I did I cut the same width seven eighths to one inch. Mm, this is very thick. And double knit because it is thicker mm -hmm. and heavier. Um, I had a really hard time mm -hmm. g getting them through. Mm -hmm. So this one I cut a little narrower. Okay. And, and I don't know, I don't think I have an end that you can see, but, but I probably cut this um, three-fourths. Okay. Three Instead fourths, of an inch. Maybe even a half inch would have been good. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. This is uh, like a quilting material. This is 100% uh, cotton. Mm -hmm. This was, uh, it was card go called Garden Variety. It had tomatoes and turnips. Oh, I can, and I can see a few. Uh, yes. Here. After I did these a little while, I began to um, really be able to look at material mm -hmm. and see what I thought would make a good pad. Mm-hmm. Um, just looking at the colors in it and, and the way it will come out when it's done. And so I've really begun to start looking at fabrics. I, I have most of the fabric myself left over from other things, but I did come across a garage sale where I bought some for 50 cents a yard or a uh -huh. dollar a yard. Yeah. So I really was selective to figure on out what you're gonna which use. ones would look the best. So this is 100% cotton. 100% it's it's cotton. softer, it's more flexible. <clears throat> um, We've got, this is That's a, knit. That's uh, knit. And I realized that I don't really want to mix knit, although it worked else. out pretty well here. But I can it, tell it that was the a, edge is quite mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, difficult to pull through. And it's thicker, um, heavier than the cotton does. Um, where my other needle was. Um, I have bent a needle. Mm. I thought I had it with me. I was going to show you. I have bent a needle doing heavy stuff like this, trying to get it through the corner. And that's amazing because, as we said, this is basically a crochet hook. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> glad your hand survived that. Well, now that we've talked a little bit about, basically, you can use so many different materials. You can even take another, a piece of yarn and carry it with it to make a different texture. You can take a ribbon and carry it with you to take a different texture. Now, if you could please show us the method of what locker rug hooking actually is. Um, it's almost just like crocheting because you, you, you're going to stick your needle through this hole here and, and this is just like your yarn, as if it was yarn, you put it over your crochet hook and pull it through. Okay. You're going to pull it through these loops. Okay. In one loop per every box? One loop per every box. After after you pull it through, then you just pull your needle through it, and this is where where it pulls. Whoops, where it pulls your uh, whatever you're using, your twine or whatever. And this is what locks the stitch so that it doesn't pull through. You have this all the way around, and then you can't pull these loops out. If you didn't have something in there, mm -hmm. all the loops would pull out as soon as you did it. Okay. So in some ways, this is very similar to the rug hooker that we had on, but she was working with a burlap and she was pulling through a fabric that was thicker than the burlap and that kind of locked it. This is completely locked by pulling a string through the center. And here, are you going to go ahead? And uh, after so you, you can pull it multiple. After you, I, I didn't in the beginning, I just did one loop at a time, mm -hmm. getting your fingers familiar with doing this. Once you do, yeah, you can put seven, eight, nine on here at a time. And it doesn't look like you really have to wrestle with it, but that's because no. of this particular fabric. This fabric is much thinner. It's the first I've ever used a real thin fabric like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I have a lot more of this. 
Mm -hmm. um, the next time I think I will cut it a little wider mm -hmm. because it is so thin and airy. Uh, not that it doesn't make, it makes a nice one, but I, but I think it's a little bit thicker would really be nice. Uh -huh. So at least an inch, because you said you tack yeah. towards seven eighths. Well, that's what my, uh, with my rotary cutter and my mat, uh -huh. I have the long plastic, oh. and that's what that, that's what size that is. I see. I used to not use that in the beginning. I just took the material with me wherever I was going, and I would crochet some, and then I would sit there and randomly cut, which you can do. It, it gets lost in here. You can't tell that you have a skinny part and a wide part. Mm. But, but, um, but it is so much easier to do the rotary cutter. When you get to the end, are there any special tips on how you fasten off? There's a little bit of a difference of opinion on how to finish, fash, uh, finish them off. I just take, at the very end, when I do my last loop, mm -hmm. I pull this through to okay. the other side, and then I just cut off a section like this. Mm -hmm. I take whatever I have here and sort of tunnel it in here okay, so that it's inside. And then I have a smaller crochet hook, a real small crochet hook, and I crochet it through the loops here. You pull it through the center. Through three or four loops in the back. And, it gets, and then it gets lost. And it gets lost. I think that's, this is the back. And you can't, yep. well, see right there's, there's where I did it. Yeah, wouldn't have been able to know unless yeah. you pointed mm -hmm. it out. And the wonderful thing about having this cord through the center of all the loops is it's not going to come out. You can throw it in the washing machine. You can put it in the dryer, right, if it's yep. as long as Washing the fabric is mm -hmm. machine washable and dryable. So you can use it as a, a hot pad and get a bit of the casserole on it and say that's fine and throw it in with your dish towels. Just like a pot holder, yep, just throw it in and wash it. Um, as well, with all of these, you can make chair pads, you can make placemats, it would be a great placemat. You can make rugs. And that's something that I brought in. And I think I'll do that next. I'm going to do a rug next. I like that. This was mine that I started quite a while ago. And for my f wonderful quilt friends who donated some fabric ends for this, thank you. I'm still working on it. I've got um, bits of sheets that I've torn up and just looked for different colors that went together. And uh, it's certainly something that I can be working on through the cold winter months. <laughs> but you can create a, a number of things with locker rug hooking. And so I would encourage you to, if you see a locker rug hook or pursue finding a locker rug hook, pick one up. It's something great to do with scraps. And uh, how long have you been doing this? Since February. Oh my goodness. And, and I love it because they're small and lightweight and you can carry them around in a bag. Uh-huh. Um, sitting in doctor's offices or emergency rooms, which you know, we do sometimes. Done, yeah. And so um, they're real easy to take with. Um, and I'm trying to make enough before the holiday mm. so that uh, all the ladies in my Bible study can oh, pick one. Kind. And I volunteer at a food pantry, and I want those ladies all to be able to pick one for Christmas, too. So I need enough of a variety That's wonderful. that they can all pick what they want. And that's such a bright thing to look at when you're laying your casserole down and mm -hmm. in February and know that it was from someone's love and creativity that it came into being. I think people like to get homemade gifts. Mm -hmm. and um, Especially useful ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and actually, my granddaughter has already said she would even buy this one from me because she wants to hang it on the wall. Oh, how she sweet. She said she thinks that would make a beautiful wall hanging. And she would rather hang it on the wall than use it as a pot pad. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Sharon. I really appreciate you sharing a slightly different craft, but one that is completely accessible for all of us. Thank you. I enjoyed it.